Hey again, guys. Do you know what I like to do on Sundays? I like to look at some baseball cards. Okay, before the National, I was taking a, a box of different era of cards and just going through the box and showing you various card issues. I did the 1950s, and we're talking about like the secondary sets, the ones that aren't so common. Uh, you know, not the, the tops and the play balls and all these kinds of cards. So I did like strip cards. I did the 1930s. And uh, now I have a box here of the 1940s cards, various various card issues, uh, some which you may not be familiar with, some you probably are. I'm going to start off with the 1941 Gaudi cards. And these, you know, back in the old days, didn't get a lot of love because they don't have a lot of Hall of Famers in them. They don't have a lot of big players. So this would be one of the last color cards, cards that were in color issued. Uh, because they were produced uh, shortly before War World War II broke out. Uh, the only other color cards, I think, I believe, up until the Leaf in the late 40s, after the war, uh, was the 1943 MP and Company. This is a, a simple set, and I want to start off and show you L.B. Fletcher. And he has a very interesting story. Boston did a, um, a contest and you could vote for the high school player in the area that you thought was most likely to make the majors. And so I guess he had a big family and uh, everybody voted for him and he won the contest. And if you won the contest, you got to go play in the minors uh, with Boston. Well, he actually made the team. He had a 13 year career. He had a very high uh, fielding percentage. He was a first baseman, played every game in the majors as a first baseman. His fielding percentage was 993. He had a 271 lifetime batting average. Uh, he was traded to Pittsburgh and uh, he became an all star in 1943. And then he went back to Boston at the end of his career. Two years he led in walks, and three years he led the majors in on base percentage. So he would have been a Moneyball manager's dream player. But he has a, a very interesting story. So I wanted to start with him. Okay, we got a yellow version of Melot. And a blue version of Melot. This was the first one I ever got. And we have this Carl Hubble. Now we have these 1948 blue tints. And of course, the man, the uh, Jackie Robinson is skyrocketing in value on this thing. It's not a particularly nice card. Um, neither is the Ted Williams. I need both of those. Uh, those are the two big cards I need for the set. Just uh, they were never that great of cards to me, so I never got them. Uh, of course, now I, I uh, may never get the Jackie. It's just gone through the roof, but I have the Lou Gehrig here. Here's a Joe DiMaggio. I had a really nice copy of this. It was sharp, but it had a speck on his face and it drove me crazy. So I sold it and it took me years to pick up another one. Here's a Hank Greenberg. Ralph Kiner. And Harry the Hat Walker. And he was a coach for the Pirates. We have, let's see. I just, uh, I showed you a 1941 double play that I picked up at the National. I got the uh, Bob Feller. And I have a couple of more of these coming. So I'll be showing those soon. Here's uh, another raw one I have, and that's Babe Young. And here's Melot. That's the batting pose. They um, had batting poses and portraits. So I'll show you the portrait coming up. Here's Ted Williams. And this has Joe Cronin. This is a nice one. And here's Hank Greenberg and Red Ruffing. Another really nice one. Here's uh, Joe Cronin and Jimmy Fox. Uh, 
Here's Red Rolf and uh, Bill Dickey. Red Rolf was a solid third baseman. Here's the Melot portrait with Babe Young. And here's Lefty Grove and uh, Bobby Dore. Man, I had a chance to get a DiMaggio years ago, and uh, they were, man, they were routinely available for a decent price, but uh, that one's skyrocketed too. Here we have some Tip Top Bread. This is a tough set. Here's a Johnny Mize. Big Johnny Mize, great ball player. And here's Frank Hayes. Great looking card. I think he was a really good defensive catcher. And we have some 1948 swells. Again, the Jackie Robinson in this has just gone through the roof. Here's uh, Bill Dickey. These were handed out by store owners when you bought gum. You bought a piece of gum and they would give you this. The Oakland A's, great team. Philadelphia A's, not Oakland. We're not in Oakland yet. Johnny Vandermeer, of course, the only player to throw back-to-back no-hitters. Got an autographed Bob Feller. Just love this card. This greatest catch in the World Series. That was a famous, famous catch. We got the greatest pitcher in Walter Johnson. Tony Lazzari. Oops. And I got uh, Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig here. Uh, we have some of these Bond breads. Of course, the rounded corners were the Bond or homogenized bread. And the square corners came in boxes of 12 cards. Here's uh, Ralph Kiner. And that would be a rookie card. So these, the originals have a uh, blondish background, uh, back. They made reprints in, that have uh, a cardboard colored back. Then in the 1980s, I guess there was a big warehouse find of these. And they were original cards, but I, I don't think they were cut yet. And so they were later cut and distributed. So they weren't originally distributed. I think that's one of the reasons that uh, grading companies have stopped grading these. Here's Ted Williams. Here's one of the square ones of Stan Musial. And if these were issued in 47 or 48, that would be a rookie card. Uh, same with Jackie Robinson. It's unclear on if the uh, square versions were issued later. Ted Williams. Not a whole lot known about these cards. Phil Rizzuto. In his country, Slaughter. Bobby Doerr. Joe Gordon. Good fielder. And Johnny Pesky. Uh, these are the, what were they, 47 or 48 Sport Exchange. This is Sam Chapman. I have an uncut sheet of these with Pee Wee Reese and uh, Phil Rizzuto somewhere. Got to go dig it out. Now, they also made a, um, a, a large version of these. So these are the small. The large version looks like a magazine cut out of um, stats at the bottom. And I have the Spud Chandler in that. Uh, I have that put away, too. Here's the... Uh, um, 
1946-47, Propaganda Montiel, Cuban Issues, uh, Joe DiMaggio. And these were, uh, I believe it was an album that came with these. I think it's really hard to find that album. And these, are you're just going to find them in low grade. Many of them were um, put into albums. And you'll find uh, glue remnants and remnants of the album on the back. Here's the Dom DiMaggio. Jimmy Fox. Carl Hubble. Spud Chandler. These are tough. Tough set. Johnny Mize. And they had players... Uh, so they had players that played in the Cuban League, um, like DeHigo. Martin DeHigo has a, a card in here, man. I almost bought one a while back, but I don't know. There was something on the front. I, I dickered around, didn't pull the trigger. It sold, and then somebody turned around and put the exact card on eBay for, I don't know, 4000 more. I think they were selling it for like $2,000, I think, so, somewhere around there. And whoever won it turned around and put it on for five or 6000 But that's the world we live in now. Here's a Rip Sewell. Here is a Chuck Klein. Um, this is Joe Cronin. And this is uh, Jim Tabor. Uh, here I have a couple of Remar breads. Now they made these in 1952. I have those in a different box, but uh, this is George Kelly. He was a coach at that time. And uh, here's Cookie Lavaghetto. At the end of his career. I have these Oklahomas. So there was a book, and, and the big one in this set is Mickey Mantle. Uh, they did like a book, uh, all the great baseball players. Might have been athletes. Might not just have been baseball players. I, I forget, honestly. Uh, but the big one in it is Mickey Mantle. But I got the Big Poison and Little Poison. And... Let's see, what else we have here? We got this quirky set. The 1943 MP and Company. You know, during the war, um, you know, making cards was difficult, right? The 41 play ball, they had to do the paper version. Uh, I guess getting cardboard was tough. Uh, producing them was tough. So th they made things like this. Uh, so in 1943, I think these are the only cards. Uh, here's Joe DiMaggio. These came in uh, strips, and they were cut out. And unlike most strip cards, they do talk on the back, which is nice. So Joe DiMaggio, Hank Greenberg, Joe Cronin, Pee Wee Reese, Ralph Kiner. And here we have, let's see here, I'll finish off with Top's very first set. And that is the 1948 Top's Magic Photos. Now these were, you would wet them and they would develop like a picture. And some of them have much more clear images than others. I know for me, when I buy them, I'm more interested in the image than the corners. Because you could find higher grade ones, but the image is very faint. It didn't develop all the way or whatever. Uh, so the image is most important to me. Here's a Babe Ruth. They're great little cards. Here's a Ty Cobb. These had multiple subjects too, like here's the Cinderella Man, James Braddock, Boxer. Good movie. 
Uh, here's, this is a really cool one, Tinker, t Tinker and Evers. Look at the image on that, just fabulous for a magic photo card. Here's uh, George Sisler. Here's Lou Gehrig, this is great. Love that one. Here's Tris Speaker. And here's one, this is a little more faded. This is uh, Grover Alexander. As you can see, it's a three. Here's a Walter Johnson. This was the first one I ever got years and years and years and years ago. And this is what these look like on the back here. And uh, great Christy Mathewson. And we'll finish it off with Cy Young. If you can't afford their T206s and other playing day cards, this 1948 set is a great way to own these fabulous old Hall of Famers. Much more affordable way. I mean, they're just beautiful cards. And they're little. They kind of remind you of tobacco cards. That's what uh, enamored me with them, you know, when I was younger. I have another graded Ty Cobb. Uh, the name isn't as clear, but uh, 1948. And this is Top's first set. A lot of people think the 51, you know, the little 51. Um, uh, what are they called? <laughs> Those game cards are the first set, but this is Topps' first set. Of course, the 51, um, are the first baseball set, but, uh, this was Topps' first cards. They've come, they went, they, they, they came, they've come a long way. They've come a long way. All right. So I think that's, uh, various, uh, that's all that's in this box. So as always, thanks for watching.